is derived from the ancient Greek word philosophia, which means the love of wisdom or um, the love of exercising one's curiosity um, with intelligence. Um, it's a study of big questions, the questions of knowledge, existence, values, being, um, these kind of things. But philosophy is actually even more than that. Um, each and every one of us has a philosophy of life, something that we choose to live our lives by. Um, you know, it's, it's what gets us up out of bed in the morning. It's what really, like, gives us a reason to live. Like, why it is that we choose to do the things that we do, value the things that we do. And uh, for me, philosophy has given me an understanding of what it means to have unconditional love. It's given me my most core values in life. And yeah, really, my reason for living. Um, philosophy is my wife, my child, and my God. Um, so today I'm going to speak on the social philosophy of John Stuart Mills, uh, his essay uh, on liberty. Um, his essay discusses um, the important role that liberty has in our society, um, as well as the limits of power, which can be legitimately, <coughs> legitimately exercised um, by society over an individual. Uh, in the ancient civilizations like Greek, Rome, and England, uh, liberty was understood as having protection against the tyranny of the government um, or the political rulers. Um, those who valued liberty, or patriots as they were called, uh, valued liberty so much that they uh, would do, you know, were, they, they would demand uh, certain immunities called political rights or liberties, um, as well as imposing constitutional checks on their government to uh, make sure that the communities or their representatives had some say in uh, governmental acts. Uh, as civilizations progressed, uh, the individuals of society wanted their government to more reflect their values and their will. Um, they wanted it to be more of a reflection of themselves. Uh, this way that they didn't fear, that they didn't feel in fear of their government and didn't feel uh, have a tyranny over them. But um, as they tried to do this, this actually started to create a new tyranny, which is the majority over the minorities. And we can see this here in the United States with our, um, with our democracy. Uh, we do this majority rules kind of, kind of thing, but this allows for a majority to tell a minority what is right and what is wrong, um, even though the minority very well might be right, considering that human beings are fallible. Um, um, this not only allows for a tyranny of law by being told that we can, I mean, by being coerced or forced to do things as law dictates, but also by public opinion. Um, having a big majority saying that something is good or right you know, um, leads a lot of people, like the minorities, uh, the society, the people who are disagreed with, um, in a place where uh, they can be thought of as wrong. And um, so, um, John Stuart Mill believed that everybody should have the freedom to say and do and express whatever they so chose, so long as they're not harming another person in society, um, or, so or society at large. So, um, one reason that Mill has for saying this is, uh, he has a quote that says, um, people tend to believe that having strong feelings on a subject makes having, reasons for, uh, makes having reasons for that belief unnecessary. Failing to, to realize that without reasons, their beliefs are mere preferences, often reflecting self-interest. Um, and uh, he also says, over himself, over his own body and mind, the individual is sovereign. This basically means that um, my individuality, my core being, myself, my thoughts, my actions, um, these are central to, to who I am as a person. And, and they make up 
my individuality, which yeah, is entirely me. <coughs> so to take away my thoughts or my, my words or my actions to say that I can only do or say certain things um, would be to take away a certain part of who I am, uh, even if this is considered offensive or wrong by society. Um, um, and Mill contends that human liberty falls into three different categories and that all of these liberties need to be met in order to live in a society that is considered free. Uh, the first one is freedom of individual thought and opinion. Um, because without this, um, there would be no room for debate and discussion. There would be um, no possibility of finding out what the truth is if, there, if truth exists. Um, the second is the freedom to live life in whatever way suits you. Mill understands that um, each of us have our own different calling in life. Um, we each have different things to, to do. Some of you guys are really interested in sports. Um, others are interested you know, in more nutritional type things um, and you know, social sciences and all that kind of stuff. And who am I to tell you that you should pursue <coughs> a different one than the one that you feel fits you? Um, and the third one is the freedom to unite with consenting individuals for any purpose that does not harm another individual or society. Um, this allows us, people who think in a similar way, to come together and realize that we're not alone and that we can expand on our ideas and get our ideas heard. Um, so in Mill's essay on liberty, uh, Mill reveals uh, his understanding of liberty and the massive importance it holds to everyone as individuals as well as collectively. Um, Mill, um, Mill came to believe that every person should have the liberty to do and say um, whatever they want, um, so long as they don't cause any harm to anyone. Um, uh, even today, <clears throat> as Americans, we don't really <clears throat> We don't really experience true freedom or liberty in the way that John Stuart Mill was hoping. Uh, there are still lots of victimless crimes that we have in society that are punishable by law. Uh, uh, by Mill's standpoint, this is an atrocity. It's taken away from who we are. So the next time you hear somebody ask, say that, um, how proud they are that we live in this free country, ask yourself, have we ever really been free? <laughs>